So our first, our first speaker is Cheryl Thornton. Cheryl is a healthcare worker, a healthcare worker who's been fighting for healthcare protection, and she was retaliated for uh, standing up for healthcare. Welcome, Cheryl. Thank you, Steve. My name is Cheryl Thornton again. I'm here. I'm part of Black Workers Unite. I work for the city and county of San Francisco Health Department. Uh, when this pandemic first started, I was coughed on by a patient. There was no patient tracing. I had no idea if I had been contaminated or not. And I had no PPE. I didn't even have a surgical mask. I had nothing to even hand the patient to stop them from spreading the COVID. We don't mind being on the front lines, but we need protection. We need protective gear to work. We need new technology to protect the public. For instance, like in the transit system, we might need ultraviolet lights to zap the coronavirus. We need a way to cleanse the buses. We need all our workers to have PPE. Here's a list of our demands from the Black Workers Unite. And here's my partner, Kim Cox. We formed this because we know that in the United States, many of the workers, the essential workers that have died on the front lines have been black and brown people. And the reason is, is because we don't have protective gear. We're not offered telecommuting if we have underlying health conditions. We're not being treated fairly. So we are asking today that the city of San Francisco tests all for COVID-19 so that we can open this city up in a responsible manner. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to mimic what Cheryl has just said, my colleague with BWU. Okay, not only that, they are retaliating against us. I was retaliated against because I wanted to know if our, my workspace was safe when two people broke out sick from being out of the country. So the retaliation was, you go clean the buses. That's not fair. I have an underlying condition. Now I'm being told I have to go back into the office, get on the BART, and they don't care. They just don't care. We need to stop this. We need to be able to telecommute if possible. We have underlying conditions. And we want to thank you so much today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you guys say your names? Say your name? Sure. Kimberly Cox, SFMTA. Cheryl Thornton, San Francisco Department of Public Health, 28 years. Thank you. So what we're talking about is protecting our frontline workers. If we can't protect our frontline workers, how are we going to protect anybody? If we can't protect the healthcare workers, how are we going to protect anybody? And San Francisco is known as the liberal city, but when it comes to workers' rights, they're attacking workers. They've allowed the violation of the union contracts here uh, and, and moving people around without proper protection. Where's the health and safety for working people? We need to protect workers in California and this country. May Day is about solidarity and about linking up workers around the world. This is what May Day is about. One of the things that's happening also is part-time temporary workers, the attack on temporary workers. And also joining us today on May Day in San Francisco is Edward Escobar with the Alliance for Independent Workers. Welcome, Esco uh, uh, Edward. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Edward Escobar, I'm the founder of the Alliance for Independent Workers. So Drivers Unite, Gig Workers Unite, Truckers Unite, national and international movement. We are facing a serious crisis and it's not just COVID. COVID-19 is just the opening act for what's to come. You have the ushering in of AI automation self-driving technology. That is going to be a permanent displacement of workers. Millions of workers, billions of workers, not just here in the U.S., but around the world. We have to start the discussion now, start the narrative with the workers from the trenches that know what needs to be done. We together need to come and speak with the corporate folks, the legislators, the politicians. We all need to come together 
and formulate a plan of action for a transition with the rollout of technology. Together, we can shape the future of work, but we have to do it with all the key stakeholders, the folks that know what's going on. There's the privatization of public transportation, which is happening. SFMTA is gonna be one of the victims because autonomous self-driving buses are happening. They're happening all over the world. And people are getting injured by them. We're here today to also say that there's a responsibility for corporations that even some of the key political leaders like Cuomo in New York, Garcetti in LA, have stated that it is required for corporations to provide PPE for essential workers. Well, this is not happening, people. This is not happening. We need to hold them accountable. That needs to be enforced. PPE is a requirement because we are in the trenches and we are facing death in the face, people. We are the ones that are standing and facing essential workers. Without us, there is no backbone to America. America freezes and grinds to a halt. So if we're there, you guys need to be there with us as well and support us in the action pro providing the PPE and also hazard pay. Because many of us gig workers, independent workers, we don't have any source to fall back on. We have no safety net. Without a safety net, then who's it gonna fall on, people? Taxpayers. So ultimately, you have taxpayers that are funding the bottom line corporate profits of these multi-billion dollar multinationals. So we need to stand together. Today is International Workers' Day, and we are in solidarity with workers around the world. This is a workers' first problem, people. Yes. And if you don't take care of what it means to be an independent contractor, and guess what? The two pillars that support the temple of work, independent contractors, and full-time employment. They are misclassifying the full-time employees and calling them independent contractors so they don't have to contribute to their fair share of the worker safety net. That gets passed on to the taxpayers, people. So at the end of the day, you pay for it. The stimulus bill that just happened, instead of Uber CEO Dara Khosrowshahi assuming the responsibility prior to this pandemic, he instead writes a letter to Trump saying, please support the workers, his workers, the same workers that he refuses to acknowledge as drivers. Can you imagine that? They still don't even acknowledge that they're in the transportation business. That's Uber. That's Lyft. That's all these corporate entities that are copying the bad corporate behavior of these companies that are doing it and getting away with. And we need to say no more. We need to say not in our names. We are not going to allow this. And people, we have the power together, united in solidarity. And that's why today is significant. May Day is a call to action. May Day is a call for help. And we need to step up or be stepped on. And I refuse to, as American, to lay down. I say, don't tread on me. Don't tread on us. Don't tread on the US. Don't tread on workers around the world. We are the ones that pay the bills. We are the ones that keep the lights on here. SF City Hall. Mayor London Breed just did a nice act and gesture. The Board of Supervisors for restaurant owners. Excellent. They put a cap on the commissions charged to restaurant opener, owners. It was 30 to 40 percent we were looking at. It's crushing them. 30, 40 percent of the overall amount the restaurant owners make is what they survive on. That's how bad it is. But the city of San Francisco put a cap on the commission's charge to restaurant owners. But we've been asking for how long for the city and many cities around the country and around the world to take on the tech titans of Silicon Valley. They don't own this city. They don't own this city. They don't own us. We're the ones that pay the bills. We're the ones that enable them. So let's not be enablers of bad corporate behavior. As we stand together on May Day, International Workers' Day, in solidarity, and we say, si se puede, yes we can. Si se puede, yes we can. Si se puede, yes we can. Thank you. Yes, we can. Thank you. 
So today in, the United, in San Francisco and Oakland there was a rally of the ILWU. The International Longshore Workers Unions shut down the ports on May Day in San Francisco in the Bay Area. That's power. That's power. We need a general strike in this country. We need to shut this country down so people can survive. <coughs> there are 30 million people unemployed. What are they going to do about their health care? What are they going to do to feed their kids, feed themselves and their kids? We need to end this military albatross that we have on our neck. All the billions and trillions of dollars going to military. Who does that benefit? Who does that benefit? And it benefits the military contractors. It benefits the billionaires who profit from the war industry. Do they give a damn about the fact that people are starving in this country? No! Do, do they give a damn about the fact that people can't get health care in this country? No! Do they give a damn that young people can't even get internet to get education when they're at home? No. We need to transform this country and the world. We need a society where the wealth goes to the people, not to the billionaires who run the world. These people have been sucking this country dry. They've been destroying this world and oil, the oil industry. They don't give a damn if people are polluted and get cancer. Right here in San Francisco, right here in San Francisco, there's a radioactive nuclear dump site in Hunters Point and Treasure Island. And what are they doing? They're building condos on it. They're building condos on it. Is this insane or what? We need housing, working class housing for poor people in San Francisco, for regular people in San Francisco. But they're building million dollar condos. Why? Because City Hall is controlled by the developers. City Hall is controlled by the wealthy. That's who runs City Hall. That's why they just passed a plan to privatize Balboa Reservoir and to give that to the developers instead of city city uh, college where they need education. All the people who are unemployed now uh, have to go to school. They have a right to free public education. And we need to make sure that you have a right to public education in this country because that is being privatized. Young people f uh, f have debt to their neck and they have to pay off the debt. How are they going to do that when they have no work? How are they going to do that when they have no future? We have a serious problem in this country and in this world that the wealth of the world is going to the 1% and they're sucking us dry. That's really what's happening. Working people have to commute in San Francisco two, three hours to get to work. Why? Because they can't get housing. They can't get working class housing because all they're building is condos in San Francisco. And in spite of this disaster, this catastrophic disaster for working people, this this mayor and this city want to build more condos. Enough million dollar condos, no more. Build housing for working people. And if you have empty condos, if you have empty hotel rooms, put working people in there, put the poor in there so they're not contaminated. That's what we're talking about, survival. The survival of the working class of this country and the world. That's what's on question in May Day. And May Day workers, there's rallies in Korea, there are rallies in uh, Greece, there are rallies in, uh, in, in Peru, there are rallies in Chile, there are rallies in uh, Greece, there are rallies all over the world in, in, in New York. And we need to say a united working class on May Day of the world of workers. We need to unite workers throughout the world and fight for our rights. The other thing is the city of San Francisco refuses to give the figures of how many people in its public workers have been yeah. affected. Yeah. Now, they have the figures. The city has the figures of how many people have gotten infected and how many workers even have died in San Francisco. They're refusing to re release that. We demand that they release those that information. They're talking about uh, doing tests on people, but they don't want to release what's happening with city workers. That is an outrage. People have a right to know who's infected and where they are, what workers have been affected, especially African-American and Latino workers who are on the front lines. These workers have been uh, attacked and they've been brutalized. They've been harassed and bullied. And there's a whole history of racism in San Francisco, ethnic cleansing, to get, not only to kick people, African-American Latinos, out of their neighborhoods, but also to kick them out of public jobs, city jobs. So that's really what's going on here today. We're May Day. Stop the racism. Smash the racism. Stop the workplace bullying. Defend public workers. PPE for all workers. This is what we're demanding today on May Day. We have a right to a job where we're not going to be afraid to die. That's what's happening in this country. People are dying, and this government, this criminal, crooked government, is telling meat workers, meat cutters, they have to go back to plants, and these companies don't have to protect these workers. This is slave labor. This is slave labor. When you tell workers they have to go back, and why? They don't want to pay them unemployment. 
They don't want to pay them unemployment. That's why they're doing this. They don't want these workers to pay to be paid unemployment. They're saying, come back to an unsafe situation. We can fire you, <coughs> and then you won't get unemployment. That's what's going on. It's chain, it's chain gang, la gang labor. They want to go back a hundred years ago when workers had to be or were ordered to go into factories and got killed and bathed, and there was no health and safety protection. And it's not just Trump. It's not just Trump. It's right here in California. There are only there are less than 200 inspectors, health and safety inspectors in California. They have not made any physical inspections. They're afraid to go out. They won't hire, they need to hire a thousand OSHA inspectors to make sure that workers are getting proper health and safety protection. That's what we pay money for. That's why there is a Cal OSHA. Newsom refused to hire inspectors to make sure their workplaces are safe. Have there been any inspectors at the MTA from, the, from OSHA? No, not at all. Not at all. Have there been inspectors at the San Francisco General Hospital? No, and not at the community clinics either. Not at the community clinic. So here's evidence right now that right here in San Francisco, people are not getting protected. OSHA is not getting protected. Has the mayor said about that? What has the mayor said about frontline workers being put in dangerous conditions without masks? They're telling our enforcement officers to reuse them. That's what I heard on the call. Yes. They're telling them to reuse, and they're not even the N95s. They're just the plain mass, so they're in danger. They've had people that come down with COVID, but they're hiding it. We want to know how many people have it now. It's all over. People have a right to know who has COVID. If your co-workers have COVID, you have a right to know if you've been infected. If they talk about tracking, how are they going to track if they don't give the information out? Right. How are they going to track if they don't give information out? That's not somebody else. That's the San Francisco city government. They're not giving the information out. So how are we going to protect the frontline workers in San Francisco, the essential workers, if we won't even give information out about who has COVID and if people have died of COVID? Uh, yes, um, I can tell you right now, or I work in the Department of Public Health, for the employees, there is not any contact tracing that I know of. Uh, I work, I've worked in a site where they've had plenty of positive COVID patients come in and we are not being identified as possible exposures. So yes, we need protection. We need PPE and we need uh, patient contact tracing or tracing contact. And we also need testing for all. We don't need to just test people who have symptoms. We need to test everybody so that we all know we're safe in the workplace. Thank you. Hi, my name is Edward Escobar, and I'm the Alliance for Independent Workers founder. It's a Drivers Unite, hashtag Gig Workers Unite, Truckers Unite movement. It's national, it's international. We have grave concerns because the essential workers that we are on the front lines, like for example, Uber came out in an article and said they were going to provide millions of masks and other PPE, disinfectant, so on and so forth. And we've been in touch with many workers, many drivers, delivery folks, everything around the country and different parts of the world. They say it's not happening. We're not seeing it. We're not seeing it. So they talk the talk because every time they come out with this fake news, then the stock market, their stocks bounce back up. Otherwise, they would continue to tank. That's Uber, that's Lyft, that's DoorDash, that's Instacart. That's all this corporate ilk that practices the same behavior of use and abuse of workers. The PPE, the essential workers apparently, are expendable, replaceable, and disposable. That's what it comes down to. Because then they don't have to pay them later. Uber and Lyft and these other companies were offering two weeks pay once you've contracted the COVID-19. So where do you come from that point? You may not come back, so they may not even have to pay you. Uber and Lyft and these other corporate companies have been getting in the way of assisting workers to even qualify to get the stimulus payment, unemployment payment, because they say they don't have workers, they say they don't have drivers, they say they're not in the transportation industry. Well, people, Uber's world headquarters is right over here on market. Right over here. And yes, they are in transportation. They started here, and this has been a global virus. They've been Uberizing everything around the world. Everybody in the tech industry, the tech titans of Silicon Valley, and techs want to be like Uber. 
They want to be like Uber. Why? So that they could use and abuse and make the billions and not give back. Well, people, that's not sustainable. And that's something that we have to address. They have the privatization of public transportation that's happening right now. Who does that affect? It affects the seniors, the disabled, students. You have other folks that are not as fortunate, cannot afford to have a private car. So just like Walmart, Uber and Lyft and these companies, they Walmartize the process. They drive out all the mom and pops. All the mom and pops. That's the middle class, people. That's the ones that pay the taxes here and keep the lights on. They're driving them out of existence. So we need to take care of those who are taking care of paying the bills here. That's the taxpayers. Taxpayers fund everything that the guys up top and the ones below us can't or refuse to do. So we need to take care of it. You got folks that are being divided on partisan issues. This is not a partisan issue, this is a people issue. We need to take care of people. This is people taking care of people. Corporations put profits before people. We need to flip the switch on them and turn it on its head. It needs to be people first and the profits will come. People first and the profits will come. Today is International Workers' Day. The key word there is workers. People confuse and they think it's all about socialism, communism. No, this is about humanism, people. This is about humanism. It's about taking care of your fellow man, your fellow person here in this world. That's what makes it sustainable. Right now, it's just like a house of cards, a Ponzi scheme. It's only feeding the corporate ilk at the top. It's just consuming the people. They have their exit strategy. What is ours? Essential workers, apparently it's death by COVID-19. We don't want that, we don't need that, and we shouldn't put up for that. We shouldn't put up with that because that is accepting the least amount in terms of existence. Listen, people, Americans want to succeed, not just survive. And we have a right to do it, and we're doing the work, and we're, we're willing to do more work to earn that. But it takes us pulling together in solidarity and unity. And you know what? People say, oh, you need to unionize. Really? There's a lot of unions already out there. A lot of unions. But I see a lot of the corporatized, corporatized unions that are getting in bed with the corporations and they're selling out workers. They're not putting workers first. And we need to put workers first as the agenda, not as an afterthought where it's corporatized and, and, and it's just damaging what the real concept of what a real union could do for workers. So together we can make a difference, but we need to have an awakening, people. We need to stop allowing ourselves to be divided by partisan politics. We need to focus on the politics of the people. And the people is taking care of people. We have the power in unity. In solidarity, si se puede, yes we can. So somebody asked me about Zuckerberg, the billionaire that gave $75 million to have the hospital na named after him. Why hasn't Zuckerberg provided PPE for all the workers? <clears throat> that's a good question. So w that's right. The general hospital workers have not been protected. Frontline workers have not been protected. So we have to protect the workers around the world. And one lesson we have is, is there was a rally in, in Korea of the Korean workers, the Korean healthcare workers. The Korean workers actually organized to protect themselves, the healthcare workers. Not one Korean healthcare worker has died because they protected the workers. So that's what we have to do. We have to have a strong workers movement to protect working people from the virus and the, uh, that's going on. It's because of San Francisco is run by the billionaires. San Francisco is run by the same people that run the White House. They're billionaires who care about profits over people. That's what we have to oppose. We have to defend the rights of human beings to have protection. We have to protect, protect housing for all working people. We need to protect the hospital workers, the healthcare workers who are dying because they don't have PPE. What kind of country is this that has no protection for workers? What kind of country is the United States that doesn't have protection for health and safety workers, for, for healthcare workers? What kind of country is having thousands of people homeless when you have billionaires? You have 75 billionaires in San Francisco. There are 170 billionaires 
170 billionaires in California and they say they don't have money for housing. They say they don't have money for health care. We're saying working people have a right to have health care. Working people have a right to have decent conditions. And we're against the union busting that, that Mayor Breed and the politicians are doing. They're using this crisis to attack working people, to take away their health care. The 30 million workers that are unemployed in this country, the 30 million people that are unemployed in this country, they're losing their health care. They're losing the right to health care. What does that mean about this country? We need national health care. We need health care for all people in this country. This is a right, a human right. We have a human right to protect workers. We have a human right to protect the people of this country. In San Francisco, health care workers were put on the, on the front lines, but they did not protect them. They did not have proper PPE, and we're saying that this has to change. We have to have PPE. If workers don't get proper uh, protection equipment, they should not be working. Cal OSHA in San Francisco. Cal OSHA in, in this state is refusing to investigate. They're refusing to go to work locations to see if the laws are being uh, followed up as far as health and safety. Why is that? Where is Cal, Cal OSHA? We spend millions of dollars on these state agencies. Where are they protecting workers? The question is, we have to build a workers' movement to protect all people, the immigrants, the migrants, the people in San Francisco who are desperate. There are going to be famine in the United States. There's hunger in the United States. We have to say that the government needs to take money from the wealthy and give to the people so that they can survive.